Thank you. Tonight we're going to talk about Viola Desmond. A lot of people have never heard the name. I hadn't heard the name prior to uh, this time. Viola Desmond is a little bit unique in certain ways because Viola Desmond was not born in the United States. Viola Desmond was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Very strange to me because with the limited exposure that I had to black history, it didn't talk about any of these things. We talked about people going to Canada, but I never even thought about whether any of them stayed there or not. But we find that a number of them stayed there. They made lots of contributions. And we're gonna talk specifically about Viola. But what a lot of people don't realize, when we look at situations such as a hockey, it was influenced by the Negro Hockey Leagues out of Nova Scotia that operated from 1895 to 1925. So we have made lots of contributions. We have been there. Many people talk about the escape from slavery going to places such as Philadelphia. Philadelphia had a rule that if you were there for six months that you could petition to be free. As many of you know, at one time the capital of the United States was Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. George Washington had his home in Mount Vernon, but he was basically in Philadelphia. So he would bring slaves up. Prior to the six months, he would send them back so they wouldn't be able to get their freedom and bring another set in. So we have a lot of game playing that we don't even know and think about. So when people were going to the north, many of them absolutely went to Canada. We talk about segregation and we have de facto segregation, which is not legislated, and we have de jure, which is legislated. There are laws that say you can or can't do this, you are refrained from doing that. And so we'll talk about a couple of those situations that come up. Now Viola Desmond, she was born June 6, 1914. And it, after a while she had taught school for two years and decided then to go to beauty school. Now she went to a beauty school that was one of the few that allowed black people in. There were no laws that prevented it. So we're going into a de facto situation where it's just the way that it was. And that will play an important part in what propelled her to where she is now. So we have this lady there. Her father was a stevedore and later became a barber. Her mother was white. Now, in the United States, in such a situation, that means that she would have been born free because the status of slave or free went with that of the mother. And one day I'll tell you about Russell Wilson's great-grandmother who found herself in, in that particular situation. But we go back to Viola Desmond. Viola went into the beauty care business. And we are familiar with Sarah Breedlove, who we know as Madam C.J. Walker. Madam C.J. Walker was, in fact, a millionaire. But along the way in becoming a millionaire, she did something that as an entrepreneur, I find very, very attractive. She taught women how to run their own business, the hair care products. And in the process, she became rich herself. But the people that she was working with made more than the average because they were able to establish their own businesses. They sold products. She manufactured the products, high quality products. And I encourage more people 
to look at the possibility of going into business. But this is what had propelled Viola. She was doing much the same thing because she had opened her own beauty shop. After she got out of beauty school, she came to Atlantic City and then to New York and f before finally going back to Halifax, Nova Scotia. She is establishing a business. She's teaching people how to take care of hair, how to establish their own business, and she's doing well. Well, in those days, they didn't have FedEx. They didn't have UPS. So she is delivering products to some of the people that have come through her school and have established businesses. She's traveling across the province and she comes to New Glasgow. And in New Glasgow, she has a problem with her car. It breaks down. Well, she's not from there. She goes to a garage. The garage says, we can't have it until tomorrow because we need a part. So she's stuck there. She gets a hotel room. And to pass the time, she goes to a movie. There are no laws against movies. There are no laws against where you can sit in the movie. So she goes in, she asks for one down. One down meaning a ticket on the main level of the movie. They sell her a ticket for one up, which is the balcony. Remember, there's no law against it. So she goes to the main floor thinking that she had the proper ticket. And they said, you can't come in. You don't have the right ticket. So she goes back to the booth, says, I want one down. The operator says, I can't sell you one down. But there are lots of open seats there. So she sits down. She's enjoying the movie. And all of a sudden, she's accosted by the police. They come in. Say, so you got to leave. She said, no, I got a ticket. No, you have to leave. The manager of the theater says, we have the right to exclude any undesirable. Now, here's a woman who is a very successful businesswoman, has her own car, and is traveling, delivering products. But because of the color of her skin, she is considered an undesirable. They physically drag her out of the movie theater, injure her hip and her knee. They take her to jail. And then they go get a warrant for her. They don't have any advice for her that she is able to get a lawyer or anything else of the nature. Now this is Canada, it's not America. We don't have the Miranda. Anyway, that's another interesting case because Miranda actually lost that particular suit. But because of some things that happened, that's what's on the law that gives us the uh, Miranda warning. <clears throat> So she is injured, she doesn't sleep, she sits up all night, and then they haul her into court the next day, all without counsel. They go through what I consider to be creative law enforcement. And what do I mean by that? We arrest you, and then we'll figure out why later. You start to run through your mind what could be going on. What is she being charged with? Assault? No, she didn't assault anybody. Trespassing? She had a ticket. So you start to run through the litany of things that she could have been charged with. 
they finally hit upon the idea. The reason that she is arrested is because of tax fraud. Tax fraud? Yes, tax fraud. You see, a ticket up is 20 cents. A ticket on the main floor is 30 cents. But the difference in tax on one up and one lower is a penny. So she didn't pay that penny. So she was dragged out of the movie theater, put in jail, arrested, had to spend the night there. Nobody knows where she is because she doesn't get her phone calls. She doesn't get anything. The fine for not paying this one penny is assessed to her as $26. 2,600 times the one penny that she didn't pay. $20 went for the fine, $6 went to the owner of the movie theater who is listed then as the prosecutor. Well, the NSAACP, Nova Scotia Association for the Advancement of Colored People, got involved in the particular case. Now, how does this get us to anywhere? In a review, and I, I strongly recommend that we continue our education. I'm so happy to see people here because this is what we do. We enlighten ourselves, we hopefully entertain ourselves when we learn a lot of the information that was probably bypassed. The reason that we have black history is because we have basically been excluded from history. So many things are going on. Now, I'll put in a plug for my blog site, amazingblackhistory.com. And if anybody needs a card so that they can get there, uh, see me. Because what I'm doing this month is I'm putting a post up every day this month. Um, to, today's post is about medical apartheid. And we're talking about some very <laughs> serious stuff that's happened where we have been the experiment in that situation. I'm going to end up with a case that many of you have heard about but probably do not understand the complexity of, and that is Brown v. Board. That's probably going to be close to 10 days because Brown was a compilation of five cases, one of which occurred in Clarendon County here in South Carolina. And uh, it was very instrumental because one of the lawyers involved in the initial architecture of that case was Charles Hamilton Houston. Charles Hamilton Houston was actually stationed in Spartanburg as part of the 369th. And they were basically kicked out because the mayor said, we're not going to protect these people. When Houston went to war, the 369th, as you'll remember, fought longer than any other unit, got more medals, whatever. But the biggest problem was not the French people. The biggest problem he encountered were the white soldiers who went around telling everybody there that we were thieves, we would kill, we would rape, we would do all sorts of things. Even to the point of telling them that we were monkeys and had tails. So Houston said that he would learn the law, come back and speak for those people who could not. We have a situation like this with Viola Desmond because she is in jail. She's finding herself on the short end of the stick. She finally gets out of jail. So what happens to that particular case? She died when she was in her early 50s. But in the period early 2000s, her sister was attending a class 
I believe it was at one of the universities in Nova Scotia. She's 73 years old. They're talking about the case of Viola Desmond. And she says, that is my sister. And it got people interested in the case. We sometimes have a handle on history that people don't realize. When I understood how close Charles Hamilton Houston, the architect of Brown v. Board, was connected to Spartanburg, to South Carolina, and the other cases that we're talking about, it brought a lot back to me because my interest in history was zero. If you can go into the negative numbers, that's where it was. It was nothing but a bunch of numbers that was talking about people that I wasn't going to meet in places that I never thought that I would ever go to. So I had no interest. So we go back to Viola Desmond. We look at her. She's out of jail. She goes back and she is still prospering in Nova Scotia until her death. But her sister is talking with the professor and says, that's my sister. And so they start going into the case. What happened here? Well, it triggered a lot of interest. And out of that interest, people began to notice what was going on. It resulted, to make a long story short, in the fact that Nova Scotia looked at the case and said, this is wrong, absolutely wrong. Viola Desmond was given a free pardon. Now we hear people about getting a pardon and a pardon says you're forgiven of your crime. But this goes further than that. The free pardon says you never should have been arrested in the first place. We were wrong. The Canadian government apologized for the fact that it even happened. Can you imagine that going on? As a result of all of the background and other uh, events that took place, they have made her a part of their national history. They have a museum of people, and she is a part of that. They issued a silver coin, solid silver coin in her memory. But one of the other things they did is they placed her picture. I don't know if we have it, but we'll run through it uh, as part of the pictures that are up there. She is now on the Canadian $10 bill. Now you may have seen Canadian $10 bills that did not have her on it. And why is that? because they were not issued until, I believe, the second or third quarter of 2018. But they have made that. As part of that archive, they go back through and have reiterated the parts of their constitution and their bringing that basically says all people should be created the same. Remember they apologize. They issued a public apology for the fact that this event even happened. One of the things about history is unless you face the situation that exists, unless you have some understanding of it, you can't even talk about it. This is why I've dedicated that particular blog, the amazingblackhistory.com, to revealing a lot of our history that has never come out. We very seldom hear anything about Canada. In fact, we don't hear a lot about America. 
we look at Viola and say it is horrible that she was manhandled. But let's look back at a couple of situations that have happened here in America. 1854, Elizabeth Jennings, church organist, and a friend are on their way to church so that she can play the organ. In New York, she is physically thrown off the train. Elizabeth Jennings, a side note, her father was Thomas Jennings, the person that invented dry cleaning that we use today, thrown off the train in her finery in New York, of all places. Harriet Tubman, who worked with the Union Army on the Cahumbee River, led an operation that fleed, freed over 250 slaves. Is, and she got a military pension for her work. But she is on a train, sitting in the wrong place. Throwing her off, they broke her arm. These are we don't think of violence happening to women, but it happens. Sarah Mae Fleming in Columbia, South Carolina, and these events happened before Rosa Parks, got on the bus in Columbia, going to work. The driver told her to get off, and she made the mistake of going off the front door. Now understand, many courts would not accept the word of a black person in testimony against a white person. So you're on the wrong end of things to start with. In some cases, you had to go onto the front of the bus, pay your money, get off the bus, and go to the back door and come in. And sometimes they would drive off and leave you. Sarah was attacked by the driver and had to go to the hospital. But that happened here in South Carolina. These are types of things that many people are not aware of. I have talked about during this month uh, Mary Turner. And I don't know if you're familiar with Mary Turner, but it is not a good picture. Mary Turner's husband was accused of a crime, taken out and lynched. She said, if I find out who did this, I am going to bring charges. So what did they do? They hung her upside down. She's nine months pregnant. They cut the baby out of her stomach, and when it fell to the ground, they stomped it to death. These are things that are brutal, they're horrible, they're ugly. And it's one of the reasons that we find it so difficult for many people to talk about the issues of race. Because we want to be in two different camps. All white people were not like that. There were many people that helped us immensely. And there were some black people that weren't so good. I mean, when we look at, uh, I believe it's Stono Creek, which was down here in South Carolina, uh, the plot was given away. And I'm not confusing it with, uh, with Brown. But anyway, we have situations like that. But what is necessary is that we need to discuss these things in a rational manner. I think by understanding what has happened, that we can get on the path of doing that. When we look back, I have devoted most of the articles to those of super achievement.
and there are many, many articles. When we talk about Julian Abel in June, Julian Abel designed the entire West Campus of Duke University. The entire West Campus of Duke University. And he did that 37 years before they ever admitted a black student. And then people want to imagine that we don't have the intellect to do things. When I talked about the Negro Hockey Leagues, there were people that said they can't play hockey because they can't think fast enough, their ankles aren't strong enough to keep them up on, ski on uh, ice skates. The game of basketball was much the same way. They said we didn't have the mental ability to be able to dribble and walk down the court. I think we've kind of proven that wrong. But when we look back, one of the things that is significant to me is that the Canadian government apologized for the treatment that she received. They honored her. They have parts of that document that basically states that all people are there. All people are entitled to the same rights and privileges as anyone else. And I think they proved it by taking action. Now we've had a bill that has languished forever. And what they want to do is honor Harriet Tubman. Now we know that Harriet led people to freedom. And when we talk about doing that, we don't realize the number of people that put their very lives in jeopardy. The Underground Railroad, if you were caught helping a slave escape, were very harsh, very serious. And basically nobody would come to your assistance. We don't talk about the Marine Underground, which came out of Edington, North Carolina, where people were put on ships and taken to safety. There are so many aspects of this that contrast what can be done. What is so important and this stands out to me is the fact that we admit when we're wrong and decide where are we going to go from here. Things have happened. They've happened on both sides. I'm not trying to quote any presidents or anything else, but they, they, that is the situation. We have had our April Ellisons, who changed the name to William Ellison and had some 60 slaves down in uh, the lower part of the state. But we've also had our Robert Smalls, who is the one that pushed for legislation to open public schools for all people. So much is there. But we fall under the guise that certain people are wrong, certain people are evil. I don't feel that way. I think that all of us have that good intention, but we need to be able to discuss it. We need to bring it out of the underground. And what is particularly concerning to me is the fact that we ourselves don't know our history. You would think that we would, but we don't. That's why I invite you to go to that particular uh, blog site. I usually put up articles <coughs> every week. Like I said, during the month of February, I'm doing it every day. We'll go look at some of the cases in Brown v. Board. One of those cases involved Delaware. Delaware was supposed to be a nice state for people to live, but they only had one high school in the entire state for black kids. One for the entire state. Now we've talked about the fact that here in Clarendon County, kids had to walk nine miles. And some of them had to row across a lake to start their nine mile walk. And what precipitated the incident there was the fact that one of those students drowned. 
Clarendon County had 33 buses for white kids, zero for black. Black parents said, give us a bus. Nope. So they bought an old raggedy bus. Said, give us gas. They said, no. And so it, it pushed to that point. But we have an example in Viola Desmond who has done something that I encourage all of us to do, and that's to become entrepreneurs. I talk about it on my blog talk radio, which comes on on Thursday at 7 o'clock. It's on blogtalkradio.com slash crown talking drums, and the name of that particular program is The Road to Success, where I talk about how we can develop ideas. It's not a program for black people. It is a program for people. I think we get too far a feel when we start separating people without looking at the content of their character and we start looking at anything else. So while I have gone for a field, I hope that you have some understanding of what has happened with Viola Desmond. When they interviewed the operator of that movie theater and said, what's the law? He said, there is no law. This is just the way it is in New Glasgow. But you see what she had to go under. She's not from there. She didn't know the practices. She was following practices where she came from. But so many times, we end up behind the eight ball. Now, I'll come to my favorite part of the program, and that is questions and answers. If anybody has any questions. Yes, ma'am. Well, she went, she went to court, but she had no, no representation. Okay. None. They didn't even tell her she could have it. And when you are in a movie theater, you don't expect to be there on tax evasion. <laughs> but that's creative law enforcement. Let's arrest her. In fact, when she was in jail, they then went and got a warrant for her <laughs> to make it kind of legal. But she was already arrested. Now they're thumbing through the books to find what charges they can put on her. And I'm sure they were looking for the most serious charge that they could find. It cost her 2,600 times what she is supposed to have tried to evade. Now she went back and said, I want a ticket down. I paid a dime. It wasn't the fact that she wasn't willing to pay it. The fact that they wouldn't take our money and then charged her with, with that. I think it's a travesty. But we have cases like that around here. And sometimes when I was working as a law enforcement officer, I used to say, I'll never see anything like this again. That is until tomorrow comes and I see something worse. But it happens. But we need to be willing to discuss, stand up and move on. Other questions? What year was this that she got arrested? She was arrested in the, I believe it was the late uh, middle 40s. Uh, uh, What's that? That was my question. Had it gotten to be in the 40s yet? Yes. It was, it, it may have been late late 30s, but the, but the thing is, um, she was doing very well financially, had her own car, had her own business, was servicing them, and she was showing these people how to make money. And it all happened because of what I would consider a humbug. <laughs> no real problem. But I, 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 I do not think that people need to be roughed up in order to be taken out of situations. I think we're too quick to do that. And I worked in law enforcement for 28 years. Um, <laughs> my wife doesn't like me to tell this, but at one time she was a psychiatric social worker on death row. Uh, so we've seen a lot of the situation involving crime and people that have been involved in it. So there we go. Any other questions? 
Yes, ma'am. Do you, um, know anything about what happened to her later on in her life? She went back into the, um, well, she didn't, never got out of the beauty business. And she was, uh, she was doing that and still successful. But you can imagine when you have a blot on your record, how that stands out. Let me tell you something that has nothing to do with that. But during a period of time in this country, we had an integrated workforce. The government had an integrated workforce. There were black people that worked as supervisors. Supervisors of black and white people. What happened? Woodrow Wilson became president. Those people that were in supervisory positions were fired. They put up petitions to separate black from white. This is where we go back, and some of you may be old enough to know that you, at one point, had to put a photo on your application when you sent it in. That was so that they could tell who was who. At one time, you had to say whether you were arrested. Now, who's more arrested than anybody? Poor people. Big constituent of that category is us. And what they've done over the years is they have turned poor black and white people against each other. They have more in common than, than anybody ever wants to admit. But it's happened. So, yeah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an interesting litany of things that have happened. 